Matthew's uh, presentation. Uh, I'm here just only doing the uh, construction, but uh, I think this is a big topic for the BDC uh, since we are the one platform solution. So today my topic is uh, interactive uh, construction simulation and planning. But really what I've been told that you guys want to hear about what's new about the 2019 features, right? From design to VDC. Uh, so I got that prepared. So uh, just get away a second because uh, this is one I'm obligated to make sure I got this through before I get to the, uh, the actual goods, right? All right, so, so what is, why do we want to do this, this uh, you know, uh, construction planning and simulation? And well, it's because it helps to solve problems. We have a lot of problems to to plan to uh, to to get things going. So uh, we, today we're going to talk about those challenges. We're going to talk about the traditional approach and the current approach, right? And then there's also uh, there's some people want to do it with a game engine approach, which uh, today uh, Matthew has mentioned that. And then we're going to talk about one platform solution. This is kind of what we want to do is user friendly easy to, to use kind of kind of things, okay? So the old plan tools that uh, you guys already know, paper and pencil, all that stuff, cause a lot of problem. And okay, I say have problems. So not much to talk about it. You got a lot of problem, waste of time and uh, you know, uh, waste of material, also you got the uh, accidents and stuff. So what is Kern? Uh, what how is people doing that uh, you know not even just in Hong Kong, but all over the world. Well, here you got uh, you know your usual planning schedule tools, right? The three coordination, 4D simulation. You got the 5D stuff. You got uh, you know uh, animation. Depends on your client's needs. You may actually want it more, and some people want to really want to have the interaction. So you go for the uh, game engine stuff, right? That's sort of the current situation. Well. Um, I don't want to hit my competitors and stuff, but I want to just mention some of the things like uh, I think this one here is uh, uh, is taken from uh, Synchro. Uh, we're going to see it's how it actually have some problem to, to show off some of the sequencing and sometimes there's a lot of those uh, visual degradations and uh, defects that prevents your client to see it, you know, cr uh, you know, correctly. But also it's very time consuming. I mean, I try to use it. It's, I, it took a long time for me to learn just single little things. Uh, not to mention it's not user friendly. I mean, you know, and uh, I, I cannot stress the fact is that you cannot use the latest technology like AR, VR, all that stuff. That's just, just not gonna happen. So also, um, you know, at, at States, I went to a, a presentation in, uh, uh, you know, Hanson Phelps in the Irvine uh, headquarters. They told me there's a lot of challenge they need to plan for the uh, uh, solid site logistics. You know, how to actually start the, uh, the, the workflow and all that stuff, get the truck in, get the uh, materials come, coming in, how to make it prepare that correctly. That's a big challenge. And of course, you know, uh, if, if for the people who really want to, you know, really high end uh, rendering uh, kind of experience, they go for the 3D Studio Max. And, uh, you know, you, you already know you're signed up for trouble. There's a lot of work, a lot of headaches. And, uh, you know, you just need to know a lot. And then there's a rendering. There's also uh, what Matthew called the, the dead-end workflow. Basically, you cannot go back. Um, so, you can see I put a dollar sign because that really time is equivalent to dollar sign. You know, it's going to cost you. Uh, not only that, I, my biggest problem is the frustration because when you're not getting things work the way you want it, you get very much frustrated. And uh, also, you know, it's uh, very expensive if you want to ask other people to do it for you. And I'm going to quickly talk about if you want to go with the game engine because uh, I, I'm from the game industry. As you guys know, I worked there for 20 years. Uh, to use those, uh, you know, tools are not easy whatsoever. Uh, you have to go through the max uh, workflow, you know, export that and then get programming involved. And uh, I think uh, I, I'm going to go pretty quick here because uh, I think Matthew showed you guys there's some interface with the Unreal uh, or Unity. You have to 
get a lot of trainings. You know, I was a programmer before. I know how much involvement that it takes. You know, if you don't know how to plug one C or C plus plus, you have to know at least scripting language, which is still not very easy to deal with. And uh, of course, uh, the reason most people use uh, you know game engine is because it supports the uh, uh, the AR and VR uh, solutions and MR. Uh, that's part of the, what you sign up for, right? So, um, so as a conclusion to this uh, game engine approach, it is really expensive, high cost, right? Uh, advanced uh, skill set required, right? And just really long turnaround time, that end workflow. So, what is alternative for, for everybody here? So, as I mentioned, uh, Fuser is one stop, one platform solution. We want you to know is that we want to make sure you know from this integration here, we from 3D coordination to 4D to 5D, we want to put it together so that you know it's made for you guys. You know I, I you know I like to write simple program, but but AEC people demand a lot. Not like game industry, we just have one fun. But this one here, you know, you're talking about scheduling. You're talking about a very advanced project management right from the very end to the to the presentation right and also you want to side logistic, uh, logistic you want to side uh, you want the uh, cost analysis you want all kind of things to build into one one thing so that you only need to learn once and do it once and quickly and in a very user friendly environment so um, I also named this platform as interconnected platform because they all interconnected, right? So from the very beginning, when you're trying to do a 3D uh, beam coordination, which is very important that you put MEP, you put MME all together, that's very, very important. So you have to validate your joints to make sure it's actually buildable, you know, before it's uh, too late, you know, you have to resolve the clash, all that stuff. And the next stop, you have to get your, you know, pursue, uh, which is here, I think it's bidding or something for the project. Uh, for the uh, simulation or the planning, uh, so actually usually need to be for that, that sort of scenarios. And then when it gets more, the client wants to know how you're gonna get your budget, your costs over time, all that stuff, you know, actual versus planned, right, all that stuff. And basically our goal is to here to save you from the costly money and time and frustration that you suffer from the current solution. So again, I'm um, sorry to put a lot of words here, you know, but uh, you know, I think it's uh, uh, very worth to tell you, right? One platform solution is we take a lot of input files, right? From Navis Word, all that stuff, to the output files, which is we do MP4s, right? We actually output clash reports, which we're gonna show you a little diagram here. And we also, you know, plan for this. Uh, we have so many vehicles that you can use the pathing. Uh, it comes with the, uh, uh, what I call the turning radius setting. So you can actually figure out all this big turning radius when the, those big trucks come into your work site. Very important, right? Uh, what's important here is that I also added the collision detection because that is a real simulation, right? When you simulate the work that those plants coming in, you want to make sure they're alive, right? Not, they're not dead, they're not pen interpenetrating, but yet it will give you warnings if they collide each other when you plant. Um, also, uh, this another thing that's very unique to us is that we support 2D, right? Uh, our 3D generate 2D automatically for you. So if you make any changes to your 3D, it will actually spill out those view sheets for you especially you change the same thing for the, uh, what I call uh, safety equipment, it will actually print that back out on your 2D sheets so that you can pass the foreman and the uh, safety officer, they can uh, check it out. Uh, also, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this year we put interactivity into the, uh, uh, our BDC version, so allow you to do you know, trainings, safety trainings, and you can put procedure training trainings for your construction worker. Uh, whether they in three uh, in the uh, VR or not, you can actually do that now. Very simple, just like uh, what Matthew showed you on the architecture side of it. We can definitely do it in the construction side of it. 
right? It's much, much more telling when the worker can get trained, right? Uh, and then we're gonna talk about some trigger usage, and then uh, I'm gonna introduce you to the 5D and the QTO support. And then last but not least, uh, we do support CAVE right now, so if you wanna show people in a CAVE environment, you can now. So let's back to this uh, input and output diagram here. So uh, we support a lot of those uh, uh, formats. You know, now we support RP RCP, which has got the recap files. Uh, a lot of complaint from our user here that uh, we do not uh, line up our point cal uh, you know correctly. Now that will be a thing of pass. So now you can use RCP to help you with that. You know, you can line it up correctly, and then that will be it. And uh, schedule-wise, we support all kind of things, uh, as our project, uh, you know, uh, power, power project, all that stuff. So, uh, thanks to our user, they, uh, you know, thanks to you guys, uh, you've been very helpful to uh, for our development. We, you know, we take all your su suggestion and put it into actions. So, uh, in, a, in a, our integrated platform, we do 4D, we do vehicle animation, we do 5D, we do all kind of thing, training, all that. We output that as you know 4D videos. We got VR, MR. We got AR. We got Cave. Uh, all the all that output things, right? You know, also not to mention all the reports it generates. So this is a new new from uh, 2019. Uh, we're gonna talk more about 2019, like specifically what we added to. But this one here just shows you how comprehensive we have put in. Uh, because of you, you gave us all the demands. What would be improved? Uh, what would be missing from the previous version? Okay. So now you can just basically drag and drop. We are actually supporting the uh, Excel now, so you can actually map a custom column. You know, from cost to your schedule. Now you're not limited to just use uh, you know other things. You can actually use the traditional things. I think a lot of Hong Kong contractors using uh, Excel spreadsheet. Now you can just map it there very quickly, very rapidly. We also support instant updates. So if you actually do update there, it reflects immediately in future. Uh, we also, you know, as, as you know, the, the big things for us is this whole 4D is VR compliance. It's, it means that one click, you can be experienced in the whole construction sequence in VR without any sort of work, one click, right? My favorite thing is, of course, uh, user-friendly. I think you guys heard that uh, when Matthew mentioned that uh, one of our staff, is she, she used to be a, a receptionist. Yes, indeed she, she was, but she's not. She is AEC specialist, I call her now. She made some really advanced 4D file, even myself and me. <laughs> so I watched that, I was just like, wow, that was cool. She did it out of her own love because she loved these things. And uh, when I mentioned why, because the user-friendly interface. If you cannot learn this now, well, I, you, know, you better talk to me. And say, Anything we're missing, we're gonna add that for you. So, as I mentioned, you know, um, this one here, we nev I never thought it was actually necessary, but it's actually uh, very necessary. So now you can see the uh, actual versus planted 4D-wise. Uh, you can even see the costs that uh, directly compare to that. Uh, no less than the uh, competitor out there, so I'm not gonna put too much effort. And uh, I've been told this is a very, very cool uh, sort of uh, video, so just enjoy this a little bit. This is done by the Chinese people using Fuser.
hope you enjoy this uh, sit down by our Chinese uh, user there. Uh, never, never know they was able to do a very beautiful uh, backdrop with the point clouds. That's uh, made me proud. I'm not sure they use the power version though. But <laughs> okay. So next one here is uh, the uh, the uh, vehicle and uh, uh, plant uh, planning. So you can see we have a lot of vehicles right now. We have a rich library that you can actually acquire. Uh, it's actually come free, but I believe it come free with the uh, our VDC uh, purchase. So it's a lot of uh, uh, new stuff. It actually, they all like fully animated, fully articulated each one of those vehicles. Uh, I mentioned about library. We have so many, some of those myself, I just found out like some of those just advanced stuff. I don't even know what they call, but uh, I've been told they're very, very useful. Um, so our animation system here is really easy, you know, easy to use, and uh, uh, you just drag and drop, and uh, and then drag this uh, little circle right there, and uh, you can actually be able to uh, animate at no time. So you don't really the the big point here is that you don't have to go to Max or Maya, because those hard work is done for you, and then you can completely reuse it. So you don't need to do any work. So here's another example to show you a, let's see, come on play, it work? Yeah, it works, okay. So this has no music, but uh, it shows you you can easily just do a, you know, use a keyframe animation here that you can grab, uh, you know, steel from the ground uh, very quickly. This is done, can be done in seconds, not, not hours. Right, all other things. <laughs> I think uh, you guys have probably already enjoyed it. So this is pr pretty much an ins instruction video. So, but uh, you can see is how easy that is. You just basically capture the frame rate, and basically shows a quick sequence how a the equipment can grab things and then release that into the position. There it goes. Now after that. We're going to just play it back, I hope. Uh, she is uh, adding to the schedule, so uh, I guess uh, now it can play out. Play. Okay, there we go. Come on, play it. So there you go, rotate it. Go down, probably rotate too much of that, but that's okay. And now, put it back. There it goes. So pretty easy stuff. Um, so there's more stuff to show. Uh, there is another one that is to show you how they can actually place those plants right in the place. Grab the whole heavy things, put it right in. And this one here is load it back in here in position and you actually get slide back into right where you need to be okay that's enough so all right uh, we talked about the vehicle complex uh, I prefer to call it fully collidable uh, you know scenarios. I've uh, been told by our uh, Japanese uh, clients they like to have a simulated so because a lot of things when you plan it you don't see the co uh, collision right away but when the animation plays uh, that's when the uh, collision happens like I don't think the car is a good example this is done by one of my staff but uh, really I see the danger is those uh, tower cranes the Lothran cranes when they actually do it they could have a very high probability they can collide to each other so we need to prevent that Um, so another thing that's worth mention is that temporary uh, equipment placement. So we, we do those temporary things during your schedule. Very useful because you have to show that some of the equipment placed there temporarily, not for permanent, but you want to show that as a procedure to give your confidence to your client that you know those safety stuff going on, like scuffling and all that stuff. So uh, another cool video done by our UK customers. Uh, I like them a lot and check it out. Sorry, no music with this one, but 
but uh, I think this is made in 29, uh, 2018 version. So what I like about this video is that they use a lot of uh, those uh, trucks and they put uh, construction workers on the site, just the uh, real things. They also, also they put the uh, temporary build-up stuff there so they can, you know, as one by one, they were, you know, removing that as they built. Not a big fan of this colliding down to the uh, ground, but somebody dropped it. <laughs> So you can see those uh, those workers that they actually live, they're not dead. They're actually working on the stuff. Okay, I understand it's just for the looks, but sometimes it's more convincing to the uh, to the people who uh, who pays the money. They want to know where those people are at and what they're doing. in the core. As soon as that's done, they're going to build the, uh, the outside of it, outside floors. So there you go, you raise up from that. And they put those uh, safety uh, barrier outside so people did not fall. And they build it, they remove it. All right, I'm gonna cut this short because uh, I think this is, does the trick here. So as I mentioned, um, we have 2D view sheet generation. So what it does that's to, for, uh, for you is that anything you place there, the material, you make changes on this 3D, it will dynamic, dynamically reflect it on your 2D view sheet, right? Uh, so if you do place like safety equipment, uh, you can actually uh, uh, see this uh, changes right on your 2D. Not to mention, if you do the uh, uh, 4D animation, it will actually give you partial 2D uh, drawings uh, based on the time. So uh, now it goes to the uh, interactive simulation training, right? So why did we do that? We wanted to prevent accidents, right? Accidents very, uh, can ha uh, happen easily in the uh, construction site. How do, we, how do we prevent that? We, well, uh, my answer, or the most people answer is, to provide trainings, right? But you, you cannot train people when they have accidents, so you have to simulate that, right? That is the solution. Uh, so how do we do that? We wanted to use VR so that people can feel they've been there. So if they fall, they're gonna, they're gonna feel like, oh, that's not good, right? So you wanna make sure they can feel this, feel this thing so that they, uh, uh, they, will, they will remember what not to do. Uh, we gonna use a trigger system to perform those uh, those safety procedures and and like uh, Ma uh, Ma Matthew Eady mentioned, this is just like the same as the architecture you can see in AR, right? So if you have AR, it's even better. So this one here is a little nausea, but uh, but it has music, right? Um, my staff here spend like two, like really late night to actually get this going, but same idea. It basically shows you how they, how she actually built a uh, concrete cast uh, column.
Okay, I think that's enough. So, so the next one. All right, so this one show you that the uh, safety training here. So uh, I think I showed it yesterday in CIC. It's kind of funny, but uh, you guys can check it out. Oh, this one does not knock him down. Wait, it does. Oh no. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I guess you guys get the point, right? Um, <clears throat> it can be very graphical, but uh, you know, uh, it can be easily done in, in our software here to show people don't do certain things. All right. <clears throat> Next thing is even more graphical, but uh, I want you. If you don't like to watch, close your eyes. <laughs> okay. So there he goes. Oh, dear God. So don't. Don't do it, you know, in anything under the power crane if you don't know what you're doing, right? Be careful, because that those things could drop. Um, so this one here is, I uh, want to tell you that uh, those uh, sequencing animation, but uh, I guess uh, today, really, I think uh, there could be a live demo, you know, but, but otherwise, uh, you know, we can show you, but it's very easy to do. So this one here shows you how, how my staff actually just make this those simple animation work, right? So, and just kind of watch. It's a little boring here, but it tells you exactly the one, two, three steps, how it works. Really, all you have to do, just type in the name, what trigger you want to do, and you select what event, you know, and this event enter the proximity of that machinery, right? So you specify that, okay? And uh, you, you also specify radius in the media, meters, all you have to do, and then you put it right there, what type, and now you've just programmed what to do. You can either knock, knock him out, or you can just give a simple message. In this case here, we select a simple message. So he's gonna, she's going to put in a dialogue name, and what the action, what kind of things she want to say. So there you go. It's very simple. She want to put red, because that's danger, right? And uh, yeah, you can also select fonts. You can font size, all that stuff. Very, very simple. And uh, all of this that can be done in within a, under a minute. So now he's just typing up like, please don't do this, I think. Can't tell from my angle, but... So once a dialogue pops out, you can actually preview it that. There you go, dangerous. Keep body away from something. So like, just don't do it, right? And then she can assign this, uh, this dialogue right to the action. Okay, she select that one, and boom, right there. And all, all she had to do right, right now, just hit the button, boom, it works now. So now we're going to take a look at what happened. Bam, not much, but chat tells you don't do it, right? Very simple. Uh, this is another video that uh, is done by our uh, partner here, uh, Paul White. They uh, they kind enough to share this video to show show you the uh, actual versus plant, how it's being done that, uh, with the one the project they have in hand. The, uh, we thought that's pretty cool. Shows you the point, like you know how they're progressing with their projects. So. I think this is one of the things that we really proud of them. They they uh, actually embracing Fuser really quickly and easily. So let's skip that one. All right. So we're going to talk about uh, QTO, right? So QTO is very important. That uh, lots of different ways to actually extract the information from Navis work, as well as uh, Revit. That's actually required to compute those uh, quantities, right? Uh, back in 2019, uh, 2018, we support the volume. We do not support quantity. So uh, in this new version, we're going to support quantity, right? So it's actually very, very difficult. It's not easy things because how you actually counted those quantity is not everybody agrees. So for example, in uh, Navis work, they counted the ways not, not the same as how Revit counted. So we had to pick a side. Uh, so currently, we picked the Revit side because people like the Revit side. They think that's more accurate. Uh, we believe so, so we go for that. So anyway, now it's being incorporated into our interface. So it has a little click there. You, it will populate those uh, uh, those places, and then all you have to do to type type in the uh, your unit cost. It will compute the rest for you. 
okay, very very quickly and and uh, very easily. Uh, so so people can actually do the uh, the uh, QTO together there. And this way to do is to do those uh, cost estimate estimation on that stuff. How many days uh, we can uh, we can actually compute it from the uh, from the uh, uh, the rent how much rent per day per hour so you can type it in so we actually give you this cost estimate per each plant. All right, well this goes down to the uh, cash flow analysis, right? It tells you exactly where the money lies at, when you can spend more and less, you can see the climbs, you know, and when it's a slowdown, so you can uh, plan your budget carefully. And, well, if you prefer you already have advanced software, like uh, Matthew man mentioned, uh, we do not want to force you to use our own our workflow. You can actually use your current existing tools to actually compute the way how you compute, right? So after done that, all you have to do is just put it in the Excel spreadsheet, right? And then basically import that into the column, and voila, you have all the costs in there. You don't have to rely on our calculations. All right, uh, I'm going to mention about the, the cave. I think there's a few, um, quite a few people actually like the cave because they did not like to wear the HMD, the, you know, the the head, head mounted uh, you know headset stuff so uh, that uh, so it basically you know allows you to go to room skill VR and uh, be able to see each other all that stuff that's all supported uh, with up to six services that's the first I think we we do a lot on that uh, I call the the service mapping right now but we're gonna uh, support true cave uh, in the in the in the R2 version uh, we also incorporate that with the AR, as you guys know, we are the only AR app out there support Hol uh, the uh, uh, Microsoft HoloLens without additional charge. If you've already purchased uh, Fuser VDC, there'll be no cost for you, all right? You get that for free. Uh, as, as opposed to our competitors like uh, HoloLife, it's going to cost you a lot of money there. And just for fun, we... We're, we're able to work with the EMSD, the Hong Kong, you know, uh, Electrical Mechanical Service Department. They they were able to, you know, to get this working in the uh, hologram, which is pretty cool. Uh, it was supported natively by by Fuser. So uh, thank you for for EMSD. Well, so I'm kind of rapidly count down to my to my sort of conclusion here. What do we do here is we want to make a solution that actually looks good, but actually embracing and uh, you know what I so-called engineering. We want to make sure it's accurate. We can do our things uh, that people feel that's useful, not because it's just. But we want to maintain this aesthetics, right, from the architecture. Like our DNA is architecture, the beauty things, but yet. We can make it more useful so that so that everybody benefits, right? So I know this is a new trend right now. So I think it's the next generation. People need to useful, but it'll actually look good. So I'm gonna just just summarize that. What's the advantage of a one platform solution? Well, user friendly, not my top things. Easy to learn. You don't need to spend all all your life to learn this software, right? Uh, and also realistic looks good, right? And uh, really good things, uh, good uh, graphics output, right? So also, you know, in terms you save time, save money, save uh, everything, save, save yourself.